My family and I had the privilege to vacation at the Hard Rock Resort in Punta Cana over our kids' spring break 2022. We just returned home, and I thought I'd share a little about our experience, the good and the not so good, to help others who might be considering a trip here as well. I'll break this review into three categories, accommodations, dining, which is where I'll spend most of my time, and entertainment and excursions. All will be timestamped below. Me, my wife, our teenage kids, along with another couple and their kids, spent six days and five nights in the Dominican Republic, the first time for all of us. We flew southwest out of BWI Airport in Baltimore, nonstop to Punta Cana, a roughly three and a half hour flight for us. We arranged a private transfer from the airport to the resort through Ontour, who I have to say seem to have a very thorough and efficient operation, although the rules of the road in Punta Cana are clearly quite different than we're used to here in the U.S. Speed, following distance, and lane changes seem to be entirely at the discretion of the driver. In the end, we made it safely and were overall very happy with Ontour service both to and from the airport and would definitely recommend them to others. I should mention that my wife, Kathy, is a travel agent, so she is well-versed at planning the details of trips like this, including our airport transfers and excursions that I'll talk about later. I'm going to include a link to her contact info in the description in case you have any questions or need help with the not-so-easy logistics of this kind of a trip. I'm so thankful for her experience in making everything on our vacation so seamless. I think we would have been lost several times without the expertise of a built-in travel agent. When we arrived at the resort, we were quickly greeted. The staff took and tagged all of our luggage, which later made its way to our respective rooms. The entrance and the lobby are very impressive. As soon as we stepped inside, there was plenty of staff ready to welcome us to our vacation and to offer up a drink. The line to check in was short and our agent at the check-in desk even entertained us with a few magic tricks. As we finished checking in, we were introduced to our personal host slash concierge, who led us on a short tour of the main building and then sat us down with some snacks to review everything the resort has to offer. He also connected with us on WhatsApp to share daily activities, menus, and other important things going on in the resort. He went into detail with us about all of the restaurant options and asked about our preferences on dining times and restaurant selection. About an hour later, he messaged us with all of our dining reservation details for the week. The only possible negative of our interaction was a somewhat pushy feeling invitation to attend a breakfast presentation on the timeshare program at the resort the following day. Our host tried repeatedly to get us to commit to a time to listen to the presentation in exchange for future travel credits, resort dollars, and message us at least once per day after to try to get us to book. We had heard Previously, from other guests, though, that the presentation is quite aggressive and a hard sell, and they make it very difficult to leave without some sort of a commitment. We weren't interested in sitting through that type of a presentation, and fortunately, we were able to get through the trip without being pressured into attending. Let's talk about our accommodations. Our guest room was truly stunning. It exceeded all of my expectations. We were assigned to room 7257 in building 7B. We did opt for an upgraded room, the Rock Family One Bedroom Suite. Our suite featured a large dining area and well-stocked minibar that was frequently refilled for us by the staff. There were two living rooms, one off of the dining area and another off of the master bedroom. Each living room featured a large L-shaped couch, each with a pull-out bed that our kids said was acceptably comfortable. The master bedroom felt like an oversized king bed to me and was truly very comfortable. There were two large TVs, one in the main living area and another in the master bedroom, and two full bathrooms, with the master bath being generously sized with a large oversized rain shower with a bench, a separate toilet area, and two sinks. Just outside of the large sliding doors off of both living rooms, is a spacious patio with plenty of seating for all. The hot tub on the patio was painfully slow to fill though. It easily took more than 20 minutes, but it was very nice once it was finally ready to go. On our final full day, 
we did wake up to an issue with our patio ceiling starting to break apart in the area right above the tub. There were pieces of drywall and debris that had fallen overnight. While the area was cleaned up when we returned to our room later in the day, no repairs had been made by the time we had checked out on the following afternoon. Overall, the entire property is wonderful. There are 13 pools, countless bars, an amazing beach, golf course, theater, casino, restaurants, lounges, shops, fitness center, spa, and more, covering over 120 acres of grounds. And you can't forget about the kilometer and a half of soft, white sand beaches that truly make it feel like you are in paradise. Green grass, palm trees, water features, and fountains are everywhere you can see. But with all the positives, there are absolutely some areas for improvement. Some that were honestly a little surprising. There were motorized carts, trucks, scooters, and service vehicles everywhere. And I mean everywhere and all the time. I'm just not sure why at a resort of this caliber, there's not separate service roads. Maybe being so used to Disney vacations has me a little jaded, but it was just surprising at what Hard Rock did not have backstage. There were some areas with literal mountains of full trash bags that would never have been visible to guests in other resorts I visited. There were also so many little but seemingly simple details that seemed to have been missed or completely ignored all around the property. The pool cues, for example, didn't have tips on them for some reason. And one of the pool tables in the lobby was actually completely missing a corner pocket. The Lazy River, which was very nice, only had six tubes total to offer guests. For a 1700 room resort, I was just a little bewildered how that would be possible. Some of the guest service areas also seemed grossly understaffed, causing longer lines and wait times than you would expect. For example, at the time of our trip, a negative COVID test was still required to re-enter the US. There were of course very long lines of guests waiting to be tested, with only a single staff member processing all of the paperwork as well as being responsible for booking all of the future appointments. It was clearly way too much work for one person, but this was a common theme that we experienced in many areas of the resort. If I were to rate the overall property and accommodations, I would give it a four out of five stars. Now, let's dive into our experiences with food service at the Hard Rock Punta Cana. The resort offered eight restaurants that were open during our stay. We understand that one or two might be undergoing updates or rebranding. Three restaurants were also open for breakfast and lunch. The dining might have been my biggest surprise of our trip, I think, and not necessarily in a good way. Overall, we found all of the food options to be hit or miss. Some were good, and to be honest, some things we found actually inedible. Based on previous trips to similar quality resorts and actually to other Hard Rock properties, we were frankly disappointed. Let me break down the good and the bad a bit, because there's certainly some options that I would look forward to trying again. I think I'll go in the order that we experienced the food, starting with the market. The market is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and is the only sit-down dining option that does not require a reservation. Our host shared that it's expected that you have dinner at the market on the day you arrive, a practice I think Hard Rock should probably take a look at because it's not the best first impression in my opinion. The market is a quick service type setup divided into different regions, Mexican, American, Asian, Italian, etc. At the very best, the food here was average. Most was not even that good. It wasn't very busy, but the staff was very slow and less than friendly, surprisingly. Our entire party thought it was a pretty disappointing first meal of our vacation. If I had to pick something, I'd say that my personal favorite item at the market was the fish tacos. But Conversely, I found the steak and corn on the cob to be highly disappointing. The kids, though, seemed to enjoy the cheeseburger and fries. Most of the adults ate very light on the first night. We did visit the market later in our trip for both breakfast and lunch and found it to be a similar experience to dinner. Hit or miss, both with the food quality and the staff. In fact, one morning, with still a half hour left for breakfast service, they had removed all of the syrup containers and other toppings in preparation for lunch but yet we're still serving pancakes and French toast. Miscommunication and lack of coordination between staff really seemed to be a recurring theme that we would experience repeatedly during the week. On our second night, we had dinner reservations at the Zen Lounge. Zen offers two options, hibachi, 
and a sit-down sushi dinner. We chose hibachi. The experience at Zen was very nice. Our chef was a phenomenal host. He really entertained us. And at one point, he even had my daughter cooking the fried rice. We were served a sushi appetizer that was wonderful. And I thought the shrimp was perfect. And the steak and chicken were very good as well. I would definitely look forward to dining at Zen again. It was an enjoyable experience with good food. The following night found us at Impanima, the Brazilian steakhouse on the property. This was another good night, although we were a little disappointed in the limited number of options that were brought to the table. The offerings at our dinner service were flank steak, sirloin, pork, lamb, chicken wrapped in bacon, and sausages, although the last two were only offered once to us during the night for some reason. We saw other tables had additional offerings like grilled pineapple, but for some reason, it seems that several options never made it over to us. We did find that all the meat was flavorful and well-cooked, and there was also a very large salad and sidebar, along with desserts, with some really tasty selections. The staff at Impanima was very attentive, with the exception of those missed items that were never brought to our table. This is another location I would definitely eat at again if I were to return. There's another steakhouse at Hard Rock called Toro, and we had reservations here on our third night. Unfortunately, this was one of the worst experiences of our trip. It took over an hour and a half to get our food delivered after we ordered. And during this time, the wait staff never checked on us even a single time. About five minutes before our food came to the table, they stopped by and hurriedly told us that the kitchen was rushing our food. During our long wait though, we watched a number of tables get seated well after us and get their food in about 15 to 20 minutes. There was a party of 12 in our same section that was seated 15 to 20 minutes after us with the same wait staff and had their food on the table 15 minutes before us. It was very confusing. During most of the hour and a half wait, everyone in our party had empty drink glasses that no one on the staff made an effort to fill. This seemed to be an exception to all of our other food services experiences. Drinks were usually filled very quickly. What made this seem even more unacceptable is the fact that there was a lot of wait staff at Toro, significantly more than you would think was necessary for the number of tables. So in this case, it clearly was not an issue of being understaffed. Food-wise, Toro was just okay. The wedge salad we ordered was actually just a bowl of lettuce with extraordinarily strong blue cheese. When the food finally arrived, a lot of it was wrong. There was a number of us with missing sides and none of the sauce that was ordered was brought to the table. My steak was actually somehow cold, but well cooked. I did enjoy the ribeye, but would have preferred it to have been warm. The short ribs my daughter ordered were great. Once the missing sides were finally sorted out, we all agreed that they were only average at best. And despite a number of requests, we're actually still waiting for someone to bring us steak knives. We didn't stay for dessert. Fortunately, the next and final night was much better at Chow Italia. The service at Chow was the best we experienced on the trip by far. Our waiter Jorge was outstanding. Our drinks were always filled. The service was fast and friendly. I think we all agreed the food was above average based on the other meals we've had. I ordered the Capri salad and it was wonderfully refreshing. My wife ordered the pear salad with gorgonzola, which she also loved. Every salad plate at the table was empty. The calamari appetizer was the biggest I've ever seen, and there was an interesting antipasto course with everything from pesto dip to octopus. For the main course, we all got a mixture of pasta, pizza, and calzones. The menu says the pasta is homemade, however, it didn't appear that it actually is to me. Altogether though, everyone enjoyed their dinner at Chow, and we finished it off with a delicious dessert, chocolate cake, vanilla ice cream, and tiramisu. Disappointingly, they were out of the cannoli on the night we visited, which is something we had heard great reviews about. On our final afternoon, just before headed back to the airport, we tried lunch at Bistro Med. We found it to be a very slow lunch service, even though the place was almost empty. The food, though, was above average for the resort. The skewer platter that I had was especially flavorful, and I would look forward to getting it again. Besides the formal restaurants, there's lots of other options, especially if you're looking for a quick bite. Unfortunately, most of them seem to follow the theme of hit or miss. Room service is available 24-7. We pre-ordered breakfast on our first night for the following morning, and it was just okay, not great. For lunch one day, I ordered the salmon, which arrived cold, 
and the wine sauce was also cold, lumpy, and appeared to be congealed. The cheeseburgers were pretty amazing, though. The Caesar salad that my wife had was drenched in dressing with soggy croutons, but the hot dogs were good. The Oreo cheesecake was very good. I will say that the room service speed and the attentiveness of the staff was very acceptable given the large size of the property. Most of the pools also have some type of food service. This too was hit or miss. The fresh barbecue chicken, sausage, and vegetables at the main pool were very good and cooked right there over hot charcoal. The chicken fingers didn't look right to me, so I didn't try to eat them. The burgers and nachos from the main pool were only half as good as the burgers and nachos from the Hard Rock food truck just steps away. I'd say if you're lounging by the pool and just looking for a quick snack, it's definitely acceptable, but certainly nothing to write home about. There's two other 24-hour food service options besides room service, both in the main lobby. The ice cream shop was very good and certainly a favorite of our group with a good selection of gelato, toppings, and frozen pops. Just across from the ice cream shop is Must Sweeten Coffee, which serves a variety of sandwiches, fruits, pastries, and made-to-order coffee, cappuccino, etc. The sandwiches I tried were tasty, as were the donuts, and my wife enjoyed the iced coffee several times on our visit. Taking everything into consideration with the food service experience we had, I would rate the dining at Hard Rock only a 2 out of 5. There's a lot to be improved here for sure. Let's shift to talk about the entertainment options and some of the excursions that we participated in. On property, there really is plenty to do entertainment-wise. Each of the pools have a different musical theme, and the main pool almost always has a live DJ or other activities going on, like a water fitness class or a foam party. There's one adult-only pool, as well as a children's pool. Of course, there's miles of beaches to enjoy with plenty of seating and cabanas to go around. One of the things that really stuck out to me is how much space there was. The resort was at 90% capacity during our stay, but the pools and beach never felt crowded and in fact, sometimes felt empty. The theater features nightly entertainment with a different show each night of the week at 9.30 p.m. We checked out two of the shows. The rock show on our first night was phenomenal. It played all of the best rock songs for my generation. The band and singer were truly extraordinary in my opinion, and most of the crowd seemed to be singing along and having a great time with every song. I also attended the magic show. I felt the tricks were good, but the magician really drugged the show out to well beyond what felt normal. In the end, there was probably about 15 minutes worth of tricks that had so much time forced into the setup that the show took over 45 minutes. Our friends attended the circus night, which they said they really enjoyed. Other entertainment options include a bike trail, basketball, miniature golf, bowling, billiards, and walking trails galore. There's a kids club, and there often seem to be some activity going on in the main lobby, in the Eclipse Terrace, and the Moon Lounge, whether it be karaoke, DJs, or live musicians. Of course, there's also a spa that unfortunately we did not have time to check out during our trip. We also participated in two off-property excursions during the week. Monkeys. The rest of our group attended a monkey experience on our second day in Punta Cana at Monkeyland while I stayed back to enjoy a relaxation day. They raved about this experience. Up close and personal was squirrel monkeys. They got to feed and hold them and the monkeys crawled all over them, jumping from person to person. Everyone was surprised how light, soft, and interactive the monkeys were. They were incredibly friendly, and they all loved the staff as well. The drive to the sanctuary was about 45 minutes from the resort in a safari-style bus, which the kids enjoyed, and there was a lot of walking once they arrived. But all of them said they would highly recommend this experience to everyone and would absolutely do it all again. They described it as a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Sticking with our animal theme, our second excursion was the dolphin encounter. It was absolutely incredible. The venue was only about a half hour from the resort. There was just the eight of us on a large private bus. It was a very rainy day that day, but it didn't detract from the experience at all. When we first arrived, the kids entertained themselves in the pool, and then we were separated by family into groups to put on life vests. Our group of eight was then led into the dolphin arena 
where our absolutely incredible trainers gave us an experience that we will never forget with our two dolphins. We got to high five and pet them. Each of us got to pose for pictures with one of the very gentle friends. Then they push us through the pool on a boogie board. This is the third time I've done a similar experience and it is just as fun and memorable as the first. After we were done playing with the dolphins, we ordered some food and drinks from the snack bar and spent some time in the gift shop. One important note, personal cameras and phones aren't allowed at the dolphin experience. So you do have to purchase their photo package if you want the pictures they capture for you. The cost of the photos for our group was 400 US dollars. Something to keep in mind when budgeting. And looking back on it all, I would rate the overall entertainment a four out of five, with the offsite excursions earning a five out of five. In summary, I'd say it was a great week in Punta Cana. Looking back, we probably didn't have enough time. I could have easily had two more full days. I was just getting to the swing of things and it was time to pack up and leave. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to enjoy the water park, to really have a dedicated beach day, or to visit the spa for a much needed massage. It rained for about a day and a half during our trip, but I have to say, even those rainy days were nice. There's so much to do and so much to enjoy that it didn't take away from the experience at all. Some other key points of information is to make sure you bring plenty of cash for tipping the staff. We ended up not exchanging any of our US currency for pesos and were able to pay for everything just fine. Overall, 99% of the staff was just so kind and accommodating. Our rooms were always cleaned well. Everyone seems to go out of their way to make sure that you were having a great vacation with the exception of the few food service issues that I talked about earlier. I should mention that no one in our group is really a drinker of alcohol. The entire group of us probably had three or four alcoholic drinks combined in the week that we were there. But I imagine if you enjoy drinking alcohol, that this all-inclusive experience is even a better deal for you. There were bars everywhere. Looking back on our entire week, I would probably rate this vacation at about two and a half or three out of five stars. Unfortunately, the rating was negatively impacted by the poor food service experiences we had. Something that I think should be an integral and stellar part of an all-inclusive experience. If I was asked if I would go back and do it again, I would though. I enjoyed the time in the pools and the beach and with my family. The resort and the grounds and the property were wonderful and I definitely felt like I was on vacation the entire time. I would hope that if I do stop back at the Hard Rock and Punta Cana, that some of the food service issues will be corrected and really boost the overall experience. Thanks so much for watching our review, and I hope you enjoyed hearing about our vacation to the Hard Rock in Punta Cana.